Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the new emboss features inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so I'm working on this, uh, this uh, fun little project here, and I'm trying to create some seamless patterns using the emboss tool. So what I have here is I have this sketch, and I use the line tool to create these, uh, these series of shapes. And then I did a little bit of a rectangular pattern to kind of make four copies of this thing trying to go with like a Greek uh, kind of pattern here. So I figured, all right, let's try to emboss this shape and wrap it around our cylinder. So using the emboss feature, you can totally do that. You can create um, a nice emboss over a curved surface like the cylinder, and you have control to, uh, to do a depth or an extrusion on that surface, and you have some, uh, some alignment stuff that you can do. Uh, but for this one, the goal is to make a seamless um, pattern. So I got my four copies here, and then I started thinking, well, can you apply a circular pattern to an emboss? The answer is yes, you totally can. Now, this wraps around perfectly and has even amount of spacing between all those shapes. So the way to get that is to just really be uh, wary of your shape's diameter and your profile entities and how they're all dimensioned out. So depending on your diameter, you're gonna to wanna to adjust that. So if I actually bring out the sketch that created this and give this like a 30 millimeter diameter, you'll see that it changes. You'll see that it starts breaking here. So uh, if you wanna create a circle, uh, a cylinder with a super seamless patterns, you just wanna be sure that your, that your pattern and your diameter kind of vibe with each other. And in this case, uh, this number 20, uh, worked out really well for those shapes. So that's a circular pattern. Can we patternize the pattern going up? Yes, you can. So this is a rectangular pattern, and the rectangular pattern, it has these two items selected, the emboss and the circular pattern, and then the directions is just the z-axis, so that's how I'm able to go up. I have a quantity set of four, and then I have the distance type set the spacing, and then I have about a five millimeter distance. Again, depending on your shapes and their dimensions, you're gonna to wanna to adjust those values. But if you're trying to do a, a, a seamless pattern that's circular and rectangular, you can totally do that to an emboss to create these really sweet looking um, sort of effects on a, on a cylinder. All right, so that's really the first example. I got another one here for you, so let me, let me open that one up and see what we got here. So I like hexagons. I like honeycombs, right? So I thought I'd draw out some, uh, some, some hexagons here and I applied some dimensions to them so uh, that they're pretty even. I'm trying to create an even amount of spacing between these, and I position these two hexagons so that uh, they can be staggered when I do a, uh, a rectangular pattern, or rather a circular pattern. So I got these shapes, and I'm gonna emboss them. And then what's really cool about the emboss is that the, the edges are like perfectly treated to where you can apply fillets and chamfers without them kind of airing out. Because I've if you try to do this with um, just a regular extrude, the, here's what happens. So I got my regular extrude. Let me pull up uh, the sketch here. So if I have one of these poly, uh, one of these hexagons, and then I'm using the extrude tool, and I say from object and select that surface, and then let's say I start eating into it. See how it's 0.5 is the distance? I'll hit OK. But if you try to do a 0.5 millimeter chamfer, it won't work because there's just some weird oddities with that. It's not a perfect, uh, it's not perfect geometry. But with the emboss tool, it is. So let me uh, apply the emboss, okay? And then I'll do my chamfers on all the edges and that works out really well. Uh, it's a perfect 0.5 millimeter um, edge or chamfer. So once we got that, then I applied the circular pattern to those two features, the emboss and the, and the uh, chamfer. And because I got a pretty good handle on my diameter and the spacing um, of my hexagons, I was able to create a nice, another seamless pattern. So once you have one set, of course, we're gonna go up with a rectangular pattern and patternize that vertically which is totally capable as long as Fusion doesn't crash. It takes a little bit, depending on how many shapes and, and chamfers and fillets things, uh, it, it might um, take a minute to calculate, but when it does, you can still add things to it. So this is really neat. I'm thinking here, if you're making something that needs grips, if you're making treads for a tire, or if you're just making like a lamp and you, and you need some interesting uh, grills, uh, this could be really, really sweet. So uh, that's another example 
um, of, of kind of creating these seamless patterns on a cylinder. All right, let's, let's see a different one. So uh, how intricate can these patterns be? Those are all very geometric, but can we do some spline curves? So there's this tool called the Vernoy Generator, and that is an add-on that you can uh, get from the Fusion 360 add-on site. And basically this is a little script that you can run to create uh, a, a sketch with a bunch of different cells, and you have control over how many, how big is your pattern, the width and height, and then uh, what's your uh, percentage uh, to scale the cells. Uh, so basically you can create um, you can create a, a, a sketch with uh, these shapes. They are generated. I didn't draw these. I just um, ran that generator uh, script and created this. So uh, I got these shapes, and I wanted to see, can I? Yes. <laughs> the answer is always yes, right? So I got this super cool um, uh, Veronoi pattern wrapping around uh, this. but. Let me go into that and to show you um, sort of the limitations of it. If there's not enough surface uh, to, <laughs> to uh, emboss, then uh, Fusion can error out a little bit. For example, I'll add this circle here, and then uh, it won't be able to because uh, it's, it just ran out of surface. Uh, so I had to just deselect and select, strategically select some of them. Um, but it's cool that you can do that. I didn't select all of them, by the way. Um, I, let's let's deselect and then just show you my trick of selecting. It's not very much of a trick. It's just select them all with the marquee selection and then deselect that inside bit. And then you can see here it is still airing out, so I had to deselect all of these circles here, and maybe this one too. And then uh, that was able to wrap around it. So depending on your uh, your shape's diameter or size, um, if the emboss doesn't work, um, you'll have to kind of Maybe you don't have enough, uh, look at that one. Maybe you don't have enough um, like surface area uh, to, uh, to do an emboss, but that worked out really well. This could, this could be um, any number of, of different um, projects, uh, but it's cool that you can create tons of intricate um, spline curves and like wrap them around here. So I hope that one really shows uh, the complexity of it. All right, the next one is gonna show a little bit of, um, not things going wrong, but just some things to be to watch out for. So I created this this uh, cylinder, and then when I extruded it, I was like, okay, well we can do tapered edges. So let me taper this and see if I can see how the emboss uh, behaves on a tapered surface. And I was kind of interested in, in how how this works. All right, so here's the shape that I drew. You'll see that it's a it's just a long strip. It's a rectangle, 30 by two, and let's see what happens when we apply it. Uh, 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 we apply that straight um, thing into uh, into the surface. So here's what happens. Let me kind of go into the emboss, and this is what it looks like by default. It was a straight sketch, but now because the surface is tapered, it is starting to kind of wrap around down, and it's sort of unexpected, right? If you wanted to create a pattern that was nice and seamless and straight across, uh, but you know, wrapping around a tapered surface, well, you might run into this issue where it's not quite straight. It's starting to curve and wrap around. So if I go back into that extrude where it creates that tapered and I remove that taper, you can see it's now straight. So there is some kind of a caveat thing to look out for. If you're trying to do something on a tapered surface, this is what's gonna happen. But I figured, well, it looks curvy. What happens when I start to rotate this. Well, it looks very curvy, and you have full control over the, rev, the, the, the rotation angle. So let's go ahead and say 45 degrees. Hit OK. Now I don't need the sketch anymore. And now that that's an extrude, well, kind of, it's an emboss, right? It's not an extrude, it's an emboss. And then I can apply some chamfers to it. And then I can apply a circular pattern to it. And what I've done is now essentially created knurling effects. Now, I've done a layer by layer on knurling, and I remember, well, to create knurling in the old way, you need a coil, you need several coils, depending on you know, the shape that you're doing, and you also need uh, to use uh, sweeps, right? And you have to kind of be careful when you're doing tapered surfaces, tapered cylinders, to do a knurling effect on tapered surfaces. This really makes it, I think, a lot more capable, a lot more editable, and a lot more flexible 
So uh, I think going forward, if I'm ever going to create some knurling effects, some surfaces with knurling, um, the emboss might be the right way to go. It's a little bit easier, and I think it's, uh, it's more flexible. So uh, if you're trying to make something like this, I think this could work out really well. So uh, although it was a little bit unexpected, like you can see the shape here, the, the sketch is like, it's interesting how you can um, work around it and then kind of make this new shape. Um, unexpectedly. So that was a neat example, I think, of showing that you can do some tapered knurling. All right, well, we have another example. Let's see what's going on here. So with this one, I figured, all right, let me make a rectangle. So I just did a regular rectangle. I drafted the surface, and then I added some fillets to these two edges. And then um, I created a shell here just to kind of create a, sort of a paneling that's, that almost looks like bent sheet metal. And then I created some fillets there and then I created the sketch. So in, in my head, I'm thinking, all right, it would be cool. Let's see how we can apply some sort of decals or a grill to this paneling. So here's the sketch that I came up with. It looks like a grill, some sort of plate or panel. And it's got some, it's got some fillets, it's got dimensions, and it has these centered, uh, center to center slots that I created and did a rectangular pattern to create more copies of it. So, I created that and now I want to apply this. I want to drape all of these shapes over this surface. And because you can do tangent surfaces, check it out. So this is what it looks like. And then you have full control where the position is as I start moving this up. You can see that I'm now on the opposite end and it's just wrapping around it perfectly because the tangent chain is selected. And the surface, because I have uh, fillets across these two corners, it treats it as a full surface. So I'm able to move it around. You could even rotate it, which is bananas, and create this really amazing uh, decals on this shape. So if you're doing something that isn't cylindrical, more boxy, but still has some drafted angles and some fillets, you can, you can create some really nice uh, features, some decals uh, over your panels like this. Uh, let me undo the positioning there. Uh, and then, of course, because uh, they're treated as like perfect geometry, you can apply um, a chamfer to those edges and get really nice results. So I created this kind of um, grill here on on this uh, on this drafted surface with rounded fillets. So that's really different, not cylindrical at all. So that's pretty cool. So I think when uh, if I'm going to make some props or something that needs these details, it's going to be fairly easy now to use the emboss tool and get a bunch of uh, nice uh, patterns. Uh, uh, kind of draped across your surfaces. All right, I got one more. <laughs> oh man, I got one more. And here, here in this example, I wanted to see, can you can you kind of use multiple embosses? Meaning, can I emboss an emboss? Well, let's see what we got here in our sketches. So I got this sketch here, and uh, this one kind of got me um, thinking, can I create a pattern that will wrap around completely without having to do a pattern. Like, can I do that? So I have the shape and I wrap it around via uh, the emboss. So you can see here I embossed it. It's got a depth of one millimeter and not much going on there. But if we go all the way in the back here, you can see that it's not quite closing this gap. And if you want an easy way to close the gap, you can select these two surfaces here then just hit the delete key on your keyboard. And Fusion will heal that together. And it, it's smart enough to know that's what I want, actually. So without having to adjust the sketch, uh, I can heal this together. Because I think if you try to wrap, like, so let's look at this. If I just try to increase the, uh, the dimension of the sketch, let's say we try to close that gap. Let's go to 75, almost there. Let's do 78. 79, you can see I keep fudging it. And then at some point it breaks and it's not able to close that gap right here. It's like, hey, I can't do it. The operation could not be completed. Avoid self intersecting inputs and try again. So you can't intersect itself. Uh, so the emboss has that limitation. But as you saw, the workaround is to, well, delete those edges and uh, and have it heal itself if you want that. If you wanted to add some more shapes, then maybe you can uh, do something there. But that's kind of what I want. I think you can keep playing around with it where you, you get an expected result. 
So if you wanted another thing here, you could probably um, uh, create a sketch and then try to um, make a second emboss. <laughs> so I got some, that's what I'm gonna work towards, right? So I got these uh, chamfered edges, I got this here, and then I figured, well, can I emboss the emboss? And the answer is yes, you can. So once you create, uh, once you create an emboss, you can then select that surface to create another emboss, which is what we did here. So if I go into this emboss, you can see that it is just selecting this surface that was generated from the first emboss. A lot of embosses. <laughs> so this is zigzag pattern. It wraps around. Um, it's not too interesting. There's not much sketches other than just like I did a rectangular pattern and repeated that out. Um, I actually copied and pasted it from another sketch, uh, another design, but that doesn't matter. Um, applied some chamfers to that. So I got that. And then I'm thinking, well, can I do another, uh, can I apply another um, emboss? In this case, I brought in an SVG of the Adafruit logo and I embossed that onto the emboss surface. And then uh, I used it as a emboss and not a deboss. Like this one is a deboss and this one is an emboss. So I have again selected this layer. If you want to, you can emboss this layer because it is selectable. It is a, sur it's just a surface that is curved. You can see here in your in your uh, in your top in your bottom uh, right hand. Um, it gives you the idea. It gives you a radius count, and it's a perfect 14 millimeter radius. This is 13.5. This is 12.5. So they're they're perfect radiuses, and that's how the emboss is treating this. So I could even emboss inside of this cylinder. So I can keep layering embosses to create a really complex model, and uh, it all adjusts as you adjust your um, as you as you adjust your diameter. It gets updated. Let me see how that works. I know at some point it'll break, but it'd be interesting to see. So let's go to 50 here, and um, I'll, it'll be interested to see how the delete. Uh, look at that. The delete works really well. Everything is just shaping perfectly with it. That is amazing. <laughs> oh man. So I'm super excited about this emboss stuff. I've been um, playing around with all these different examples. So let's kind of uh, step, take a step back and see what uh, what everything looks like here. All of my examples here laid out. So there you go. There are all the examples and, ha and fun shapes that you can make with the new emboss tool inside of Fusion 360. I had a lot of fun playing with this. Um, I think it's really important to kind of play around and, and take some time to uh, to exercise uh, the different shapes and things and features that you can do in Fusion. Um, I'm interested, are you folks using uh, the emboss tool and what uh, what limitations have you run into or what unexpected things have you run into? Uh, for me, it was really the tapered stuff and stacking, um, stacking uh, embosses on top of embosses to create really complex stuff. Um, but that's gonna do it for this one, more of an experimental one. Let me know what you guys think. I will share this as a public uh, download so you can download all of these shapes and, and see how exactly they're all made. Um, but that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you folks so much for watching. And don't forget, it is up to you to make a great day. Bye folks.